What's up, everyone? It is Denise Salcedo, and I am back with another interview. Today, my guest is none other than the creator of Ambi Major League Wrestling's very own Alicia Atu. What's up, Alicia? Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I feel like I've been wanting to interview for interview you for such a long time, and I'm like, finally got the opportunity. Let's oh, roll okay. with it. Oh, I'm psyched. This is gonna be so much fun. I'm already, I'm already thinking about, ooh, what are these questions gonna be? I've watched your stuff before, so like, let's get to it. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, like, I was like, I gotta come up with some good stuff. I'm gonna interview the interview queen. Like, we gotta bring it, bring the game here. But no, this is very exciting, Alicia, because you know, I kind of want to start off with the fact that you have been killing it as an interviewer. You know, you have really been doing a phenomenal job and have been doing great interviews. You know, for quite some time now. So you really used YouTube to sort of propel your career did you ever think that your youtube channel would end up being the catalyst to everything that you're doing right now no way not at all i i honestly just wanted to meet bands that i loved growing up get free concert tickets and just have like a good time i never had any intent of it growing to the point that it did and it was honestly just something for me to pass time while i was in high school i'd always finish work early i started writing album reviews and just posting it on this little blog and next thing i know people were reading it so i started going to gigs and I had this little crappy, it wasn't even an HD camera, and I started asking bands two questions. I used to call them a 2Q video interview, which is so silly. But hey, we all have beginnings. And yes. uh, it just went from there where people started to really dig it. And then I got in contact with some of the biggest uh, companies over here in terms of labels and management. And the rest is just as cheesy as it sounds like. I just haven't looked back. The rest is history. And I'm, I'm so grateful, though. Like, I'm, I'm so grateful. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got to tell you, I mean, like when I think about it, I'm like, oh my gosh, you started when you were in high school. Like, I am so jealous of that because yeah. it's like you kind of got started at a time where like, I feel like in high school, I didn't know anything that I was doing. So for you to <laughs> kind of, you know, really branch out and do this during this time period in your life is really awesome. So with that being said, you talk about, you know, wanting to, you know, uh, meet, you know, your favorite bands, get free concert tickets, etc. When did you decide, all right, cool, the music stuff is great, but I'm going to also do pro wrestling as well yeah so a couple of years in i was able to interview a bunch of bands like metallica motorhead your yoko onos and then a bunch of people on the radio like dua lipas and charlie poots and it got to the point where i realized this is becoming something like this is wild and i've loved wrestling since i was a kid so my dad always kind of played that manager role when i was a teenager he'd come to these shows with me and you know he's like my my security guard and he said why don't you start interviewing wrestlers we start going to wrestling shows and it'll just be fun and i was really apprehensive not because it wasn't a good idea but because it's a whole new world and i thought oh are all my music people gonna just leave me like i didn't know but we took the chance i did that first wrestling interview and people loved it so it it was just so much fun for me it was it was even more energetic than the music stuff and i just got lost in it and yeah now now we are here <laughs> that is really awesome and then, you know here's the thing though is that in wrestling you don't see very many women whatsoever so like when you're breaking in and you're doing these wrestling interviews you know you're one of the few women doing them so it's like what did that mean to you that like hey you know what i'm starting to do something in what is known to be a man's world it was very surreal for me. And at the same time, I grew up such a tomboy. I was into the comic books, the wrestling, the video games. So all my friends growing up, aside from a select few, they were all guys. So I was kind of going from that world into another world where I was like, oh my gosh, it's a whole new brotherhood that I'm making. So in that sense, it kind of felt natural. But at the same time, especially as a teenager, you start to realize the other part of it where it's like, oh my gosh, there really aren't many females doing this. Am I alone in this? What's happening? And this is almost eight years ago when I started doing the music stuff, nine years ago. Oh my gosh, I'm getting old. But, you know, <laughs> I went from that like, oh, I'm so cool and young and in these bands. And now I'm 26 and I feel like I'm ancient. You're but, like, anyway. what did it happen? Oh. You're like, I used to be the youngest person in the room all the time. And now it's not the case anymore. And now I'll be interviewing 21 year olds. I'm just like, I know what it feels like now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I feel you. Yeah, but it, it's just been a crazy journey. And I just, I don't know. It's, um, it's one of those things where I keep thinking to myself, hopefully people will see what we're doing and they'll realize they can do it too and not be scared because they're always going to be surrounded by the other gender or, or put these kind of 
chains on just because they're women doing this you know like females can like whatever they want they can also kick ass doing this and I feel like we're proving that so well said like seriously hands down to that because I feel like you know that's the thing is that like when you're breaking in and like I said this is such a male dominated space I kind of want to get an idea of what the reactions that you got from people within the business whether it be promoters uh you know wrestlers themselves and also fans what was their reactions to you and what you were bringing to the table I feel like a lot of people at first would see me walk into the locker room and think, oh, she's not going to know anything. And I even had bands. I'd interview some metal bands and they would look me up and down because uh, you've seen how I dress. Sometimes I look like I'm a complete hippie who would not like metal music, you know, uh, and other days I look like this. And they'd literally say to me, oh, OK, we'll see how this goes. And I would start asking questions. And by the second question, after the formalities and everything, I would drop something with crazy knowledge and research and instantly they'd go she knows our band and it would switch they'd have respect for me and I felt like it was kind of the same in wrestling you're going from one thing to another and I had already built up a crowd and so I'd appear within my first month in, in the wrestling business at some really big companies I was interviewing the whole ROH roster at the time who had like Cody Rhodes the Bucks Omega and people kept thinking who is she and they didn't realize all the hard work I'd put in prior so I had to really prove myself but at the same time luckily it didn't come too hard because I knew what I was bringing to the table to these promotions and to these to these wrestlers I was trying to help them as much as they were helping me so I feel like once they realized I knew my stuff I am a fan I've been a fan since I was a child I think once they found that out a lot more respect started to come into play and you know and now we're here where I can walk into places and people are coming up to me who I've idolized since I was young saying oh my gosh so nice to meet you and I think this is this is wild so you're like yeah. so nice to meet me so nice to meet you, yes. you know? but I think oh. that's the thing and I kind of want to get your insight on this because you mentioned having to prove yourself when you go into these interviews and you know trying to you know garner that respect but it's something that you have to keep doing until you develop a track record and until you develop a reputation and granted mm -hmm. you've already done that but it's kind of one of those things where I think that prior to right now to women that are creating content we got a lot of mainly of just like the be prior to you know you mentioned being a fan right and having the knowledge prior to this it was really just the you know the models if you look great you're being on yeah. tv so now there's like this new wave of like women coming in women as fans and women coming in as as you know knowledgeable so how do you feel about that as because at the same time it's sort of coinciding with women's wrestling and how mm -hmm. women's wrestling is sort of growing within its own yeah, I'm all for it. I mean, I genuinely think no matter what your background is, no matter like any little part of you that can be picked apart, screw it. Like if you love something, you should be able to go into that field, do it. And if you're great at it, awesome. If you're not, keep working at it until you are, if that's really your your dream and your, your goal and your passion. But I think like anyone should be able to do what they want, as long as it's something that's you know, you know what I'm saying. As long yeah, as I'm exactly, okay, exactly. you know, legal. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just I'll never understand why someone will be critiqued or criticized from the way they look or their gender or, or who they're interested in. I just think it's so stupid. So without getting too political, I just I think if you love something, go for it, no matter how terrified you are, and hopefully it'll all work out. Because like I never thought this would happen, and now. Life's now you're here. Good. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Good. So, you know, your career, you know, really took off. You started doing stuff with Impact Wrestling. Then you did, you know, some stuff with AEW. And now you're here with, you know, MLW. So before we get to the MLW portion, I kind of want to get what was your experience like going from like being a fan to an interviewer to now, you know, being essentially part of the roster as talent, as an interviewer, et cetera, and the different roles that you have taken on? What was it like to have that shift in your career? It was very interesting because I started off just doing the interviews thinking, all right, this is going to be it. Like, it'll just be YouTube. And that's that's my life. Like, I'm so content. I'm so happy. Then promotion starts saying, hey, the locker room really likes you. All the guys would love for you to interview them, but not for your channel, like actually for our promotion. I thought, oh, OK, that's interesting. I have to learn all these different things and what's happening. And I'd watched it, but I never like studied mean gene or washington thinking oh i'm gonna do that you know so i had to learn a couple of things but once i got the hang of it after a couple of promos it's like this is so wild this is so much fun and i couldn't stop and then after working with a couple of brands like you mentioned the impacts and aew mlw came around and they said we want to fly you out to our show in new york see how things go and i think it was within like 45 minutes to an hour i was approached by 
one of my bosses now and he said we want to sign you They're like we don't know how you're not signed but screw the other things like this we want you and just knowing that passion and seeing how much they were interested and they gave me what I wanted and vice versa it just felt like such a good collaboration and now I'm seeing myself literally in a commercial on Vice TV with our world champ in Fatu who's facing a uh, hammer stone during Fightland, And it's just, it's just wild knowing that, yes, I am an interviewer, but I'm not only an interviewer. And they, they see that at MLW and they put me on the posters and the promotions. And it's just, I'm so grateful. I, I really am. And there's a lot more happening with them in the works that definitely is going to be putting me past an interviewer too. So it's just, I'm just, I'm really happy with everything and the way it turned out. I am, I'm grateful. So it seems like MLW definitely sees what you have to bring to the table and what you have to offer. So like, you know, when you got when you got signed to MLW and now it's been, you know, it's been a while you signed end of 2019, if I'm correct. So now it's like, you know, we're almost towards 2022. You've done a lot of content creation for MLW. How would you describe your experience overall and some of your favorite things that you've been able to do under the MLW umbrella? It's just been amazing being able to have such freedom in terms of what I want to say, or we can be given something to do and the outline will be great. But I think, oh, I think I would say this better. Or I think that uh, so-and-so would probably be able to say this and it'd be hilarious. And rather than them being stuck up, like a lot of other brands I've worked with, they, they'll just go, that's a really good idea. Like, let's implement that. So I think the fact that even my bosses, like literally highest on the food chain, are so willing to listen and care and just want their talent to be happy with what they're going to be doing on television. I, I, I love that about this company, like more than anything, but then the roster too, like our roster is so diverse. We have people from all over the world, <clears throat> excuse me. It's just, it's amazing. So there are so many different aspects that I love. <laughs> I'm so glad that you mentioned sort of like pitching ideas when you're doing your interviews and stuff, because there's been so many times that, you know, as someone who watches like everything, I feel like the role of the interviewer is sometimes dumbed down to where like oh, they have so the interview. Much. Yeah, they have them asking dumb questions that don't make sense. And you're like, I know for a fact this person wouldn't ask this in real life or if they had some input in that. So yeah. like to be able to have some creative input in that, that's really awesome. <laughs> Oh, it, it's amazing. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. I've been talking you're for like fine, literally, literally two weeks straight, which is hilarious. <laughs> but no, it just it warms my heart knowing that they have that confidence in us as well. Because it's not just me, it's the rest of the roster knowing, hey, we signed this person because we want them to shine. We don't want to make them into somebody else. We don't want to have some other person who looks like 20 other people are getting signed elsewhere. <laughs> it's like we're individuals. And that's why you want us as your talent. So yeah, the fact that they don't try to mold things, they just try to make them better and kind of just um, add to everything, I think is something that most, most brands that I've experienced don't have and don't implement. So it's just, I love that. I love that freedom. Cause I always think I know what's best for business in terms of myself. So why wouldn't they want that, that input, you know, and they take it. Oh yeah, for sure. And now the other thing that I want to do add, and you kind of mentioned it right now, you know, seeing yourself on a Vice commercial. And that's the thing is that Vice TV is essentially like just Vice, the brand in general is something that is known across, you know, the mainstream world, not just wrestling, they're kind of dominating every single space, news, pop culture, and now they've really made a mark in the pro wrestling world. So for you, you know, you've had this long journey, you you know, went into MLW, and now MLW has this partnership with Vice. What was your reaction to seeing yourself in the commercial, the reaction of just even hearing that the company was working with Vice TV, and you know, your thoughts on that? I was so excited. It's, it's a huge opportunity. And I, I may have said this prior, but this locker room is such a brotherhood to me. So seeing all these guys who've been working their asses off for so many years, now having this opportunity to be seen by the world, it's amazing. And we air literally right beside Dark Side of the Ring, which is just on fire lately. So <laughs> the opportunity is just endless, you know, and seeing me in these commercials, and I, I go by Alicia too, because I was going to have a stage name, but I was like, I just want my family to be proud. They've, they've yeah. from day one, from day one, they have been such massive supporters. I had this crazy, crazy dream. They're like, just go for it. Like what? go for it. So seeing my name pop up in vice feeds and seeing my face in commercials, is just a pride thing. Like it's, it blows my mind. And it also, it's also validating because I've been busting my butt since I was 17 to get to somewhere like this. And now it's, it's happening. So it's just, it's cheesy, but it's just really humbling and it's exciting. So it just, it still feels like just the beginning. I've only been in the wrestling world for four and a half years and it just, it's crazy. I'm excited. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's really cool. And I love that because at the end of the day, you put the work in, you see the results. And that's, you know, you clearly you're seeing that right now. So, uh, so Court Bauer, uh, he was a guest on uh, We're Live Pal, which was one of the shows that I'm part of. And he broke some news about MLW Embedded. And he talked about this being a segment where you have journalists and, you know, members of the media coming on and really talking about these like uh, hot topics. So what can you tell us about that? What further information? can you give us yes so it is a brand new show which will actually be debuting in between fightland which will be airing on thursday october 7th at 10 p.m on vice oh, nice little plug but uh, it's going to be airing there for the first time and it's a open discussion roundtable where i host and sit down with some of the hottest most respected journalists and analysts within the wrestling business so uh, it's going to be absolutely crazy nothing is off limits we don't tiptoe around a single topic we talk about other brands other people people within other companies and no other company does this a lot of companies shy away from even mentioning another company's name so yeah it's super exciting I broke or will be breaking some massive news in terms of in my opinion one of the best wrestlers hands down in wrestling coming to MLW this fall Ooh, I, oh. love the, I love this person I'm and are like, we gonna find this out that day Yes, you'll be finding this out during Fightland as the uh, very first MLW Embedded will be airing. So I, I got the information. I freaked out. I, I, <laughs> I, I freaked out. It's a, it's a, it's a big name. So yeah, I'm very excited about that. So breaking news will be uh, there. And other than that, the roundtable itself is crazy. We have Meltzer on it, Raj Geary, Andreas Hale, Emilio Spark, just people who have also been hustling in the industry for forever and are big names too. So it's amazing. And I can't wait for people to see it. A lot of work went into it. It's in collaboration with Vice. So yeah, it's a big deal. That is very, very exciting. I can't wait to see what everybody brings to the table and just finally getting like uh, this kind of like no, no boundaries. You say what yes. you want. And I like that idea because like you mentioned, a lot of these, you know, talk shows that are under the umbrella of a company are very, you know, favoritism is mm -hmm. obviously there, but you kind of want to see, you know, what's the truth? Give us the real details. So that's going to be very exciting to see. So now, um, we are going to go ahead and kind of be move, move, we're moving on to the lightning round game. But before we do, I do want to ask you a major question because, you know, you like you said, you kind of didn't really see all of this happening in your career. Wrestling is something that moves so fast and anything can happen. So what is your like ideal like view in the next like couple of years of where you want to see your career go? What are some of the things that you still want to do? I just want to become one of those household names where if you're a wrestling fan, you just know who Alicia Toot is. And I don't even mean that in an egotistical way. It's just for me, having put in that work for so long, even going back to the music stuff where I was doing six gigs a week, interviewing eight bands a night, you know, it's just, I want that to happen. I want people to understand how much I've worked for it and how much I love what I do and that I'm good at it. And so that's not a little egotistical, but whatever. <laughs> you gotta be though. If you're not, you're not you gonna gotta believe in yourself. Yeah, you, you gotta. If, if, so, and the way I see it, it's like, if you don't hype yourself up, who is? <laughs> Right. Yep. No, that's the thing. You got to believe in yourself for others to believe in you. And I do know that I bring that to the table and that confidence. And it's been wild because I did start this as a kid and I've grown so much into what I am today. So uh, that in itself is just blows my mind. So I just want to continue to grow personally, professionally. And I mean, MLW has just been such an amazing home. So growing with them, hopefully, and just seeing other deals that are coming to fruition and just other crazy things that are about to happen. I'm just I'm here for the ride. I'm very go with the flow, but I also have ambition. So it's kind of like whatever comes, I'm very grateful for. And at the same time, I just want things to be massive. <laughs> Well said. I'm very excited for you. I'm excited for MLW. Excited Thank to see you. just like the wrestling business, like in general, and all the things that are going to happen. So now we're going to go ahead and jump into the lightning round. So Let's I'm going to ask it. you 10 random questions about yourself. You answer them however you please. Just an awesome way to get to know you just a little bit more. So okay. here we go. Are you guys ready for the lightning round with Alicia at two? Here we go. Question number one, what was the very first wrestling show that you ever attended? I attended Smash Wrestling here in Toronto, and they were actually the first ever promotion to have me do backstage promo work. Oh, well, that's <laughs> yeah. nice. It's like the like a full circle. Full circle. And this was only four and a half years ago, so it was literally my intro. I mean, I've been a fan for forever, but that was my first show and kind of the beginning of, of this 
career. So yeah, very crazy. <laughs> Question number two, what are three items you must always have in your refrigerator? Cheese, a Starbucks mango refresher drink, <laughs> and um, ooh, what else, what else? And I mean, ice cream. Our version of refrigerator is different. Like we call the whole thing a refrigerator in, in Canada. So yeah, an ice cream. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean the whole thing? Like, oh, you mean like, I, I don't there's get like, it. What do you mean? So there's like a fridge and freezer, but in America, like you guys call a refrigerator a different part than we do. I noticed from when I'm staying with friends and everything. So there's always like the really cold part that's frozen. And then the part where you have your water and your fruits and stuff like that. So yeah. Oh, yeah I feel like, I'm like, I don't know. Like I just call the whole thing a refrigerator, even though it's like, you know, yeah, you have your freezer and then you have the, yeah. okay. I was like, wait, what is going down in Canada? I need to get this information. Now, when you say cheese, do you have a favorite or is it just like, any and all cheese i mean any and all but i love havarti gouda uh cheddar of course is a go-to for anybody um mozzarella is a little bland but if you get one that's like a little more expensive it can be pretty good but i'm all over the place like i can talk about cheese for way too long i love this i love how we're like well what, what kind of cheese give me the information yeah. <laughs> that's great uh question number three what is one place you have always wanted to visit england a hundred percent. I mm -hmm. grew up listening to so many bands from across the pond, all of that indie rock from the early 2000s. I was obsessive. So I just want to go there, explore, catch so many concerts and just take in everything. I want to go to Liverpool and do that entire Beatles run. I just, oh, it's the dream. It really is. Sounds like really good stuff. I hope you get to do it. I'm sure you will. You. Uh, question number four, what's the best Halloween costume you have ever worn? I got to uh, work with Hot Topic a couple years ago and they sent me a full on Wonder Woman costume. And that to me just felt, huh, felt so good. So that is that is my favorite for sure. I've done the skeleton, I've done the witch, I've done every, Wonder Woman. <laughs> Fantastic. Question number five, what are your top three favorite albums of all time? Oh my gosh. Oh, this is really difficult. Okay, can I go with like, Go okay, with whatever you want. Go okay, with whatever so you want. what I'll have to say, instead of records, because even when it comes to bands, if you give me the Beatles, I can't just decipher like my favorite record. So I'll do I'll do the albums from the band. So I'd have to go with Bee Gees. We'll go with the like, greatest hits. We'll summarize it. So okay. <laughs> Bee Gees for sure. I'm so sorry I'm bending your question. No, I you're fine. No, you're fine. <laughs> no, you're fine. I love this. So Bee Gees, Beatles, and Kiss. But Kiss would, Kiss would be Destroyer. I do know the record for Kiss because I just like, that is one of the best albums ever made. But yeah, those are my three. That's hard. It, it is because there's like categories and you're like, well, I got to like, you know, there's just so much great stuff out there. Yeah, that's difficult. But final <laughs> answer. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. Uh, question number six. Who is your dream interview in wrestling and outside of wrestling? Okay, so in wrestling, it would have to be John Cena because I've just idolized that man since I, I was a kid. And now seeing all of the work that he does outside of wrestling, it's just so damn inspirational. So he's just he just seems like the most wonderful human being. So I'd have to go with Cena. And then in terms of someone I want to interview who's not a wrestler, Paul Stanley from Kiss. I am oh, just yeah. a huge I'm just a huge Kiss fan. And he seems like such a cool person. I just watched a bunch of their documentaries. His book just arrived while I was gone in the States. I have this huge new book biography that I'm going to read. So he would be cool. And then um, unfortunately, he's not with us anymore. But I would have loved to pick Frank Zappa's brain. I am just a huge Frank Zappa fan. And he's a, he's just a genius. So I think that would have been a very interesting conversation. I love that. I love that. Question number seven. What's the last show you binge watched on TV? Ooh. Okay. So I just finished the 24 personalities of Billy Milligan, which is insane. I love documentaries, but um, I watched Clickbait, which was really good. That one's oh, buzzing. Yeah. A, yeah, that one's buzzing a lot on Netflix. And there was another series that I like just finished. There are too many. There are way too many. I'm the kind of person where at night I'll just watch like 10 hours yes. of working until four in the morning. <laughs> but those were the most recent ones. And clickbait was wild. There were so many twists in it that were really, really good. Oh, Squid Game! Squid oh Game. my gosh. I didn't even know what that was. I didn't even know it was a show for some reason. Like I've just been like missing the boat on this. But no. how was it? You ha you have to watch it. Like you have to to watch it. If I, I love movies like Saw and anything that kind of keeps you on your toes that's a little gruesome but has crazy twists and a really good plot and this was just filled with that stuff. So yeah, Squid, that was the one. Squid Game. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make a note of all of these and watch all of them. Do it! 
there is really so much good TV, but like whenever yeah. someone recommends a show, I'm like, all right, I'll have that, you know, in my mental and, notes. And it's not just me. Like the world is obsessing over this, this show. So you yeah, gotta I've seen it all get on that train. Timeline. I was like, is this a mobile game for some reason? Like I didn't <laughs> think it was an app. That's I great. So dumb. <laughs> Next, question number eight what's the last thing you do before you go to sleep uh, the last thing I do before I go to sleep is usually turn off my television which is so <laughs> lame like I'll, I'll, or I'll or I'll write some kind of poem or, or lyrics and I'll fall asleep while doing that but yeah usually the last thing is just I feel I'm nodding out you do the good old clicker and then you go yeah. to bed <laughs> like that's it yes yeah. question number nine what's the most used app on your phone Instagram, which is funny because I never even used technology prior to having this website or, you know, like doing what I do now. So it's definitely Instagram. I'm guilty of it. I, <laughs> I was going to say, you weren't a MySpace much. person? No, actually, I never, no. I never had, I never had MySpace, which is weird because I was such an emo kid growing up. So you would think I would 100% have been on MySpace, but I just yeah. never, I didn't even have Facebook when I was a teenager. I didn't, I didn't have socials until I was 18. So I just wow. didn't care. I would, I would call people, you know, very old school. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. I love that. Uh, question number 10, last question. Name three people who inspire you the most. Oh, Okay. I'm going to wrap them all into one and I'm going to put my sister, mom and dad, because my dad, he's the reason I love wrestling and music the way I do. My mom is one of the strongest humans I've ever met. And my sister is just she's amazing. She's a nurse. And just knowing what she's going through, especially now, she's she's just so brave. And I adore them so much. So I'd have to go with my family wrapped into one for one of them. Then I would have to go with again. I'm so sorry to mention him again, but I have to say Paul Stanley just because he went through so much. He had a deformity with his ear growing up and then he ended up playing one of the best, biggest bands in the world. Like just seeing what they went through and people still giving them slack to this day, but their icons would have to go with him. And then my third biggest inspiration, there's a band called No One the Whale. And they're very, very indie. They're from the UK, but they're one of my favorite bands of all time. And their lyricist, Charlie, has some of the most gorgeous lyrics I've ever read and they were just very uplifting in some harder times in my life so it'd be a mix between him and Burt McCracken from The Used who's another band I love they just they have lyrics that just lift you up when you feel like everything's wrong and you know sometimes you just need that so yeah I, I gave you it. what three four five so I, I doubled them but I'm um, whatever <laughs> all of them man like there's so much inspiration out there I totally Everywhere. get it I totally get it I love this BTW I'm like I've only talked to you for like 20 something minutes and I've already learned so much about like yeah. all of, like, these like musicians and I'm like hell yeah like I'm already getting all this information this is great Alicia oh, I want to thank you so much for doing this interview with me before we go please feel free to plug in anything you'd like to plug in Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. This has been so much fun. I feel like we just need to talk a lot more off camera now. This is great. So yes. I appreciate your time. Uh, but to everyone watching, if you go to Google and you type up Alicia Atout, A-T-O-U-T, there you will find all of my platforms, including all of my socials, my Patreon, the brand new OnlyFans with Selena De La Renta, along with my merch store, interviews, everything in between. Uh, otherwise, you can catch me also hosting for KnotFest, which is Slipknot's uh, festival. I host a show for them every single weekday on their Twitch channel. Channel. So if you love music, especially heavier stuff, check that out. And of course, MLW, we air brand new episodes on our YouTube channel with MLW Fusion every single Wednesday. And then Embedded will be airing with Fightland happening on the 7th of October on Vice TV. Huge, huge show. It's going to be wild. So be sure to check that out too. And just stay tuned to everything because I'm telling you a lot's about to happen. A lot. Well, I, you got me completely psyched. I'm very excited to see what's going to go down. Alicia, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. Guys, do not forget to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.